This is a replay review for the brown player, Killer88, who is in the backline spot on Canyon. So before we really look at the actual replay, let's just talk about glitters in general, right? So you've got your four frontliners, and then you've got four backliners. And generally speaking, your tech position will be where red is and he techs and yellow is your air position, right? And then these two positions where pink and brown are, these are flex positions normally, right? So but when you first start, you want to think about what your role is in this game. And the flex position here can definitely do a lot. The flex position can kind of tech alongside, um, not like straight tech to T2 because you can just buy, but you could, you know, build a stronger economy or a lot of times. And what makes a lot of sense is for the flex position to actually come up and help the front line. So sometimes that means you would kind of come up here and attack this way. Sometimes it means you might come here. Sometimes it means when the attack comes here, you will come and you'll kind of battle and you'll help the orange player here. But if you think about the canyon position here, think about you want to try to affect all of these different little lanes and you want to have an impact on your front line. It's especially true if when you start to play, if you notice that there's two colors up here, it means that your frontliner up here is 1v2. So in this position, you want to try to help Canyon, obviously. So let's get started. Okay, so you're so you wasted a little bit when you dropped at first. Um in that situation or in this situation, it's better when you drop down to meet to have everything queued up so when you after you place your commander you can queue up everything and so what it makes more sense to do is when you have your comm you just go max 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 right you queue up all your maxes and then you can queue solar solar and but if it's all queued then you immediately start building it right away so you lost like a little half second but all those things add up and that's really important so you're gonna go max max lap so you've got metal and you've got energy but if you look you're already kind of losing a lot of energy so instead of going max max lab solar solar it's actually better on glitters if you're gonna go max 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 solar solar alternatively if the wind is really good you can go max max wind max wind 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 both starts are fine so either three mexes into two solars or two mexes into one win into another mex into three more wind but you want to get all of your mexes and your energy before you build your lab because if you don't you're going to energy stall which i assume is what happens here momentarily so let's see see how you have 25 and you're building here so you're going to build this and you're going to keep going. But when this lab finishes, you're not going to have the energy to build any of these units. And that's the problem. See, so now here you aren't building this lab, this lab as fast because you don't have the energy for it. So it's much faster if you go max max. So you, you recognize that, which is great. And now you're going to start building solar. But if you had built the solar sooner, you would have had the energy. And Let's see, you're at 12 metal a second because you've got these. We're building. Okay, so you go for the second one, but those should have been built along with this before because look, you've lost so much metal by not having this, right? Every, every second you don't have this, you're losing 1.8. So if you had built this earlier, right, in the first 10 seconds, you would have had an additional 50 seconds for that to accumulate, right? That'd be like almost another 100 metal. Okay, now your lab is going to finish. And you're going to build your other mechs. So all the buildings you build here are right. Your only mistake is you build them in the wrong order, right? If you had gone max, 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 solar, solar, lab, that would be much more efficient. You would have more metal overall. You'd have the same amount of energy, but this would all be done sooner. So let's look at, do you have an ally who does that? Yeah. So here's an example, right? 
your ally does this and in the time that it takes you to get these three with those two in your lab up he has these and he has three solars up and his lab is finishing so those little things kind of add up because economy scales a lot so we're gonna go max max and you've got these all right this is done okay so the next big thing in addition to just kind of a basic starting build order is if we look at our lab in the lower left see how it says build power 100 that's actually not that much build power if you look at any unit right like a bot lab here the number in green is 6500 that's the build power it requires so you need to put a lot of build power to build things quickly the easiest way to do that early game is with your commander your commander has 300 build power you can see that down there so what makes more sense to do is go max 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 solar solar lab and then on your commander you can just after your lab is done and you start building you just right click and your commander will boost your lab right or you can hit guard and click it and then he'll help these things build quicker the reason you want to do that is the faster you can get out construction bots, the sooner you can send construction bots out to go get these mexes, right? To start building wind in back. But the point is your lab builds slowly and your commander builds quickly. So use your commander at the start to boost your lab and get out more constructors because your constructors can also boost your lab and they can build other things. Okay, so if you just look at the, your commander is going to like reclaim some metal and then he's going to build these. The reclaim in your entire area isn't actually that much. It's 207 metal. I mean, you ate one, so maybe it's like 215 or something, right? 220. But think about this, right? This max is 1.8 a second, right? We'll just for simply to simplify it, it's we'll say two. So in 100 seconds, that's more than all the reclaim that's on the map. And so, or that's in your little corner. So instead of picking up all these little scraps and starting with a Lazarus first to, to reclaim it, you can just leave these here for a bit and you wanna take these mexes before you get any of the reclaim. And your starting build here should really be like two construction bots uh, and then maybe like some pawns or some ticks to kind of stop any attacks that come in. But your commander should be boosting this instead of taking that. And you always wanna take the mexes before reclaim. The only time you ever wanna take the reclaim first is if you need a really big boost of metal, like if you were at zero metal or if the reclaim is contested, right? Like if you're on the front line and you're fighting here and you're like, oh, there's metal here and someone's coming, then you can take it before building mexes because you don't want to get it to get taken away from you. But in this situation, instead, you would want to get your cons and you would have you want to have your commander boosting your lab. All right, let's speed this up a little bit. So the other issue that you have is that you're not energy scaling at all. And see, see how long this is taking. If you had gone for this con first and had the con boosting, you would be able to build stuff much, much quicker. So now you're going to take these maxes, which is cool. And you're eating these rocks, which while nice, isn't necessarily OK. So a couple things here. Your Q was just two construction bots and a Lazarus. And I think when you're kind of like a newer player, one of the very best things you can do is just have an incredibly long Q. So for example, at the start, you can go, OK, I need maybe two construction bots and I want one Lazarus to eat those things. And then I want, say, five pawns to fight off attacks and to help my front line. And then maybe I want two more construction bots um and you know there's probably going to be stuff down there so let me get like five rocketeers right but queue up all that stuff and then you can just right click and have it rally up to here and then your guys will go and that makes it better because you never want to be floating this much metal and this much energy right if you're being efficient you kind of want no metal and no energy unless you're specifically saving for something right so like look at red your red player only has 161. And if you look down the list, most of these guys have spent all of their metal except for you. And you want to spend your metal as quickly as possible. And the way you do that is by having more build power, right? And you also want your lab building things constantly. 
Next, when you build wind, it's great to build wind farms like that. That's definitely something you should do, but this will chain. And when I say chain, it means like if something runs up here and kills, you know, these two, the explosion will kill every other single thing in here, right? It'll go boom, 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 boom. And then soon they all die. So the better thing to do is once you, oops, once you queue up wind, if you hold shift, you can build it in a line or if you hold shift and alt together, you build it in a row, right? And so you can build rows of two and rows of two don't chain. So you'd be fine. You could go like row of two, row of two, row of two. Alternatively, if you have a grid like this and you hit Z, you'll space them out. So if you space out your wind, even just one, then they don't chain. So big grid, like the, the idea behind the wind, perfectly correct. Just space them either in rows or in a spaced grid. Um, okay. And you need to scale your energy economy and that's great. The other thing I would say is you kind of want to get an early E storage if you're going to go wind, but we can build that a little later. So it looks like your ally up front is only fighting one person. As far as we can tell, there's only one color. So we always want to check on our front and see how it's doing whenever we're a backliner. But if you're looking and you see here, right, you can see these units are going to be coming up. And a lot of times when you backline, once you queue up a bunch of stuff, just take a second to look at the front line. When you see this happening, you need to go, oh, OK, I need to build pawns. And maybe you saw that and maybe that's why you started building pawns, which is great. So now your pawns can come up and react. Uh oh. So this is uh, something that I said kind of earlier at the start, where a lot of times the role of your position is to help fill sort of like these gaps, right? Uh, you can build like five pawns and just put them here. And if you have five pawns here, at least you have early warning for a raid or you can stop a lot of raids because if you don't stop something here, uh, especially early on, right, it can literally just sneak past everyone and it can run in and kill them or kill you or kill your ally. So I'd say in general, when you're in this position, try to hold something up here and just help your ally out. OK, and so you've got some pawns, you're making a few more pawns, which is good. But we still need the build power on the lab. And we're building metal storage. So your base metal storage um, is the number right here, right? And so if we turn off player view and we click on someone like him with you, you get metal storage from building buildings, but generally you're at like 1250 or 1350 early on. You pretty much never, never need metal storage as a frontliner early on uh, for a couple of reasons. The biggest reason is you never want to stockpile that much metal. If we think about it just numerically, right, you've got like 1100 metal. If you were to put that into pawns, right, that's like, you know, a thousand metal is basically a massive number of pawns, right? It's like 20 pawns. So think about what 20 pawns would do anywhere here. 20 pawns can like run through here and kill a bunch of stuff. They could do stuff over there. So one of the reasons why you don't want metal storage is because in a perfect world, you should be close to zero metal, right? Like look at all these guys who have like they spent the majority of their metal. You don't want to have a lot of metal. You want to be spending it. Uh, also, metal storage is 330 metal. So building this, you just spent like 660 metal for buildings that don't help you, that you kind of don't need. So instead of building these two, I would say you just want to build one energy storage and you want an energy storage because when the wind drops, you'll have a bit of a buffer so that you'll still have energy until it recovers. And because your commander, who we'll talk about sending front in a second, your commander needs energy to fire his weapon, among other things. He needs it to cloak. When you hit K, that's cloak, right? And it's 100 energy a second if he's standing still, 1,000 if he's moving. And he needs it to degun, right? And degun is 500 energy per shot. So to do all of those, sometimes it's nice to have energy storage early so that your commander can actually do like cool frontline plays. Secondly, your commander is a ton of build power and you're utilizing that build power here. But instead of using your build power here, it's better if kind of early on you can just put down like one construction turret 
in range of a lot of things and that construction turret can help build units quicker if you're building wind back here it could help build wind faster it could help build all sorts of things faster and once you've put down like one or two or even just one as a backliner your commander instead of being back here he can come all the way up here and he can kind of assist the front line and that's important because like on the leak that you just saw here like before this guy had built those if your commander was like here or here he could have just run up and degunned all those um light tanks before they came in and raided right and then you wouldn't have to deal with any of the aftermath so even though you're a backliner your com it's it's great a lot of times to just bring your commander to the front because if this guy dies and you need and they need someone to reclaim it or if something happens it's always great to have another commander and you can just put down llts here as well and then you can kind of help defend so let's see what what happens next all right we're losing max And they kill these. I probably would have ran your commander up to kind of help with some other things. So another big thing, let me leave it on half speed actually while we talk about this, is see these unclaimed mexes. Even though these aren't quote unquote yours, you should always help take unclaimed mexes. The worst case scenario is you send a con up and he he builds this, and then 30 seconds later, your orange player goes, hey this is mine and he says please give right and you're like okay fine like i built it let me give it to you but it's fine a t1 max is 50 metal this is basically two metal a second if you hold it for 25 seconds it's essentially paid for itself right so if he doesn't say hey can i get this back then you can just hold it or you can build it wait 25 seconds and then give it to him and then he'll have more metal to do what he needs to do but all these unclaimed mexes this is super brutal right it's you probably could have claimed these like around maybe minute two maybe minute three and it's minute five look at that that's one two three that's four mexes that's eight metal a second, right? And you probably haven't had them for 120 seconds. That's a lot of resources that are just kind of left off the table. Okay. And you're building pawns. So pawns, I think, are nice kind of like responding things. But I also think if you had gone maybe rocket bots, you probably could have chipped away at stuff here. Because if you look, there's just like LLTs and incisors. But this, okay. And then your commander is chilling. And this guy is chilling. So this goes back to what I said earlier, where I was like, have really long queues. You can have long queues on your factory here, but also have super long queues for your workers, right? Like this worker, you could have him go, you could go, okay, build a construction turret. And then you hold shift and you say, okay, after the construction turret, let me get some energy storage. And then after the en energy storage, because I'm overflowing metal, let me get four energy converters and then after that let me build some wind in back right and you issue like 25 different things but guess what when you get distracted when you look anywhere else this guy is still building things and that's one of the most important things you can do is always have these these units building things because then when you're fighting when you're distracted you're still doing stuff and doing stuff is always better than doing nothing same goes for your commander, right? You could literally issue a string of commands to your commander where you're like, okay, take this and then take this and then build an LLT. And then from there, come over here and take that, right? And then from there, come here and build an LLT. And then from there, build an LLT and then take this max and then, right? So you could just issue this massive string of commands for your commander. And then when you're focusing on building other things, you're like, okay, you're maybe you're looking at the map, your commander's still working, your commander's still doing stuff. So just from this, these first five minutes, the big takeaways are your initial starting build can definitely be refined. You always need to have a bunch of build power boosting your lab. If you don't wanna make nanos right away, you can always just make construction bots and have them boost like you're doing here, right? And construction bots are awesome because look, they give you seven energy a second. So if you get like three of them, that's an additional 21 energy a second that'll help boost your lab. So it's never a bad thing to like make more construction bots and have them boost, but it's more metal efficient technically to um, drop nanos instead. Nanos are construction turrets. These. 
Okay. So we kind of talked about that. Um, a lot of times it's nice if you have a couple defensive LLTs or something else like that. We are at six minutes. So your T2 player, your tech player is going to be selling and you bought some, which is awesome. And you're going to sell them here. Whenever you have your T2 coming, um, there's a couple sort of optimizations you can make. The first is you can get a transport, which is 68 metal. You can just say, hey, can I buy a transport? You give him 70 metal and then you can pick this guy up and fly him over and it's faster. But also once he's here, you need to boost these so that they get built really quickly. So your commander, actually, if you just right click on him, he'll run over and then he'll help him build all those mexes and you'll build much quicker. T2 cons have a lot more build power, right? They have 180, but your commander is still king at 300. Alternatively, when you have more bots like this that are boosting, you could just have two or three of them follow this T2 con around and then upgrade the mexes so that it's a little quicker. Okay. Let's see. So you bring your units down. I definitely like that. And you can kind of see that front is losing a little bit and that's concerning. This probably isn't the... Okay, so you... There's a few things here. One, um, pawns don't do well into defenses or units of any kind. They're more kind of like a raiding unit. They're only good against uh, like lashers if you have enough of them or against wolverines but you can't run them into llts in this situation what would have made more sense if you'd seen the unit comp is to build rocket bots and you can kind of like run them forward fire rockets run them back it's a little harder on this side because sometimes they won't be able to run forward and run back and dodge artillery but in that situation instead of trying to like run through this really narrow choke that has this cool arc that can just like attack and kill you you can always just go around it right just because this is your lane doesn't mean that you need to win this super narrow choke um alternatively you know if you do come here you can like if your commander was here you could be building llts and you could kind of be like fighting off back there okay and then we start making centurions so this is the issue with not having kind of fortified that is that this can run in and your commander is off on the side not really. Yeah, so if your commander had been farther up, you probably would have been able to stop that. So in a raid like this, this is one reason why it's great to have a transport as well as you can just move your commander and drop him in front of this. But ideally, if you can, you want to cloak your commander so they don't see him and then run in front of them and then degun. Right? Like they're going to come here and he cloaks his commander and then he's going to degun and he kills all of them in one shot that was actually a beautiful d gun so i would say in that situation that's definitely something that you could have done when you saw them coming you could have cloaked and run here um or you could have run here and then once you're close cloaked you can't actually cloak as long as he can because you still don't have enough energy storage right you could only cloak for like one second So see, he's walling that off. Like if there had been walls there, if there had been walls in some of these other sections, then those blitz wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to run through. So you could also just wall it off if you want. But I think aggressive play is almost always better than defensive play. So you lost a lot of wind, right? You lost a ton of wind. And also your wind here chain because it was built like we talked about before. But and you lost a lot of stuff here. So your commander is reclaiming anybody, anything can reclaim, right? The best use of your commander in this time is to utilize his build power. You even have a resbot, right? This resbot can eat all of that. Your commander should come back here and boost this, right? You want to get the mexes that you lost and get them back ASAP, or you want to be building more wind, more energy so that you can kind of recover your economy. And then when we're looking at your front, we can see that, oh, so blue is going to trade with orange. And this is a situation where if your comm was kind of up here in the area, 
you could have come down and you could have either reclaimed those wrecks or when you see a massive force coming, you can degun the wrecks and then they won't be able to take them. Two commanders is 2,500 metal. That's like your entire T2. And we didn't spend our metal. And because we didn't spend our metal, we don't have units that can fight this back, right? Um, I think you probably could have gone vehicles, but that's probably a conversation for another video. If you had just had either like a bunch of rocket bots or maces or centurions, and all of this was in units and the units were up here and they were fighting, you probably could have held this off and you could have helped them. So your calm comes up now, which is great. Whenever you see an ally die like this and there's all this wreckage on the ground, you really need to start spamming. So we don't have build power again, but we talked about that. You need to spam Lazaruses because you don't want to reclaim this. You want to resurrect this, right? If you can come in here and build his mexes for him and then resurrect this, resurrect this, resurrect his lab, resurrect his vehicle constructors and give them back to him, right? You can kind of get him back in the game. But at this point, he's pretty screwed because he's at plus four and plus ten so your job as a backliner is to support your frontliner so if he loses stuff you want to try to help him res all of that and i think kind of canyon falling here is going to be the the coup de grace for this game but let's watch a little bit longer so again, your calm is just inactive. Remember, you always want to have super long queues. And there's all this reclaim just sitting here. And your units here aren't really protecting much. So whenever you have units, it's always better if we don't idle them. So instead of having them there, I would say you could probably have them like up here somewhere. And you could either have them maybe guarding that or maybe guarding that or just like here and then if something comes up here you just move over the concern with them here is blue or someone else could come in with fast units and like if these pyros aren't there they can run up and they can hit your base or they could run like that right or they could like loop in and go that way or loop right so it's like if you if you just move these up they're able to hold a lot more so we talked about resing your ally Okay, so the pyros do pretty good there. And then here come hounds. So this guy's way ahead of you just because he kind of managed his economy a lot better. You totally could have been in the same situation, but it was just kind of like um, a combination of inefficiencies that let him get farther up, right? So he's got a lot of nano turrets, so he has much more build power. He has a lot of energy that he scaled with. So that's just kind of what you really need to practice. Um, I assume this game ends soon. Because you won't really be able to hold. So just as a quick recap, let's pause. We're not distracted. When you first spawn, I would say in a lot of situations like especially if you're unsure about the wind, you can go max, 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 solar, solar, and then your lab. Always boost out your first con, like one or two cons. And then I would even make maybe like a pawn or two or maybe some ticks to fight off any raiders. And then you want to have your cons boost your lab. You want to have one to two cons always boosting your lab. And then your commander maybe can build some more wind. And then you can get a few more cons, right? And you want to have some cons building oops some cons building wind here maybe some cons building wind here your wind should be spaced you want some nano turrets right the construction turrets you want energy storage and not metal storage and then you also want to once you know after a minute or so and you've used your commander's build power you want to bring your commander up here and you want to just help you know help your team help fill leaks right make sure that if something runs here you can kind of stop it make sure there's lts there and if there are mexes that are behind that aren't claimed just claim them and then you can give them back to your ally later but it's much worse for them to be unclaimed um beyond that like if you can kind of practice your starting build i think that we can talk about units and some other compositions first but in my opinion, the strongest thing for you to do to improve, improve your gameplay right now is just work on your 
basic macro mechanics, which we talked about for that, which is you want to be always scaling your energy. You want to have enough build power and you never want to hoard metal, right? In a perfect world, you should be at almost zero metal. You just want to be spending as much metal as you can, either into scaling your economy or into units to help your front line, which is now falling. Um, so that is it for me. And uh, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, hit me up in Discord. And that's it.